Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we'll be talking about the box office for Fantastic Beast 3, The Secrets of Dumbledore, as, of course, this has kind of gotten under the radar, and that is that Fantastic Beast has already opened in 22 international markets, including the UK and China. That's right, Warner Brothers continuing to work those deals with the Chinese Communist Party, while all the while still holding that Russia is violating human rights, while ignoring the clear and numerous human rights violations of China. Screw you, Warner Brothers. But before going any further into these numbers and what this means for the film going forward and why the now-reported production budget of the film should be concerning for this film, for this franchise, and for Wonder Brothers in general. Before getting any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, lap that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification on. That way you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So as you can see, Fantastic Beast, as we've talked about in previous videos, is projected to make 48 to $58 million in its domestic opening weekend, with its entire domestic run being 108 to $138 million. And I was saying before how Warner Brothers should be pretty concerned about this number number since the production budget on this film was likely going to be around $200 million and therefore meaning around a $500 million production budget. Well, we finally now have reports that, again, the production budget, this is from Variety, indeed cost $200 million to make, meaning officially this film needs to make $500 million worldwide to break even, which means this film is in dire straits. If the domestic number is only going to be around $100 million, that means it needs to make 400 plus million in the international market alone in order for it to be able to break even. And one of the biggest problems that it has going for it is that, again, this is something that was not really widely reported upon because obviously Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was clearly getting the biggest attention as it was just, again, uh, destroying a lot of the narratives that have been set over the last several years. But Fantastic Beast opened to $58 million in 22 international markets. Now, some might say, well, what if those are small international markets? That wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, here's a bit of the problem. Uh, some of those numbers were actually uh, from pretty big markets. So, for instance, it opened in China. That's right. They won't work with Russia, but they'll work with China, and they've made already $10 million there, at least according to the numbers as of the recording of this video, which is not that impressive when you compare this to other China numbers. However, remember, 75% of that, so $7.5 million already, has gone to the Chinese Communist Party. So congratulations, Warner Brothers and all the other major studios. You are continuing to fund the Communist Party there in China. But you also have other major markets like Germany, like Japan, and the United Kingdom. That's right, United Kingdom, where it only made $8 million. Not a very good look to say the very least. Uh, one could argue that they are in limited release in these various countries, and once they have a wider release, that means that the films will do a lot better. If you look at the per theater number, that, you know, it's actually looking a lot better than one might expect it to. However, I do think that this should be an early danger. Danger will Robinson sign for them because this is still not very good. Again, $58 million in 22 markets, not very strong. And also when the biggest number is coming from China, where they get the lowest return on their investment and the highest return on the Chinese Communist Party's investment, uh, that's not a good sign overall. Not a good sign at all. So if we go ahead and look at the summary, let's go ahead and try and see if maybe we can make some sense as to exactly what to expect from this film and whether or not it's going to be able to make its money back or not knowing it needs to make around 500 million dollars in order for it to break even so first off in the series we have um and again this number has not been updated the first film cost 180 million dollars uh production budget then the crimes of grindelwald went up to 200 million dollars and so they decided to put another 200 million dollars into this film even though a lot of diminishing returns notice this drop off so the first film made 811 million dollars which makes a lot of sense because people were really starving for Harry Potter content. At least I know fans of the franchise were. They missed the universe, and this was their opportunity to go back into the Wizarding World, and so a lot of people were excited about it. But as you can see, uh, it dropped off by about $200 million the following movie because the first film was, was not all that great. Crimes of Grindelwald was actually downright terrible, and so I would not be surprised if you see another $200 million or so drop between this film and the previous film, which would mean that this film would probably cap out somewhere around $450 million, and I think that that might be a best-case scenario. And that would mean that this film has a good chance 
of being a financial flop and failure, especially since it is coming out over Easter weekend. By the way, blessed Holy Monday, everybody. Blessed Holy Week to everybody out there. And uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to be focused on various uh, religious devotions. Obviously, the Easter Triduum is this weekend and Easter Sunday as well. And even though it does mean that there are going to be some people having days off on Holy Thursday or Good Friday or Easter Monday and therefore able to boost these numbers, we do know that typically over these weekends, it's religious films that do very well. And interestingly, there really aren't a whole lot. Father Stu, for instance, is coming out. But that is really not, I think, a typical Easter film had to come out. I would not be surprised though if Easter, if uh, Father Stu actually does uh, better than expected. However, that one definitely does have a much more Catholic centric message to it, as it is about Father Stu. So that might leave some Protestant audiences who are a huge portion of the movie going populist for religious films out uh, to not want to go see that film or to not be as interested in seeing that film if it was, you know, The Passion 2, for instance, or something like that. Um, but it is still, I think, enough to point out that Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore is in pretty dire straits at at this point in time. It's not looking very good. And again, if the film is going to meet these projections of the 100 to 138 million dollar number, whereas the first two films made 234 the first time, 159 the second time, again, this would make sense. This would actually, you know, people can try and blame pandemic or whatever, but this would actually make sense even historically based on the law of diminishing returns, based on the fact that the first film was decent, the second film was trash that people are just kind of tired of this franchise. Then you add on top of that the drama surrounding them replacing Johnny Depp, which was, I think, a terrible idea just from an optics standpoint. I was not a big fan of Johnny Depp in that role. I think that... uh <laughs> The, I think that Mads Mikkelsen is a much better actor um, and probably fits that role a lot better. However, uh, the fact that they replaced him and canceled him because of stupid nonsense, to me, I think is um, is going to cause some people to not go see this film. There's also the dynamic of people who are going to try and cancel J.K. Rowling, who is a writer on this film as well. And there's just so many other dynamics, right? So there's three negative dynamics right there. People who are tired of the franchise and are just not interested in the franchise. People who are just going to avoid this film because of Johnny Depp uh, not being in the film uh, and because of the drama surrounding that. And, you know, the third is because of the drama surrounding J.K. Rowling. So all of those things are not looking good and are not very uh, promising for this film. And so if this is only going to get around $100 million and we continue to see the film... Uh, drop internationally as well, which is what we're seeming to see at this point in time. Uh, it's not looking very good. And we'll go ahead and do one more thing here. Let's go ahead and see if we can create a comparison chart between these different films. So let's put Fantastic Beasts Crimes of Grindelwald up there and let's see if we can pull up the third film as well, even though no numbers are actually in at this point. Let's see if we can get those numbers there just in case. I love how it's still labeled as 2021. Uh, or there we go. Now it's been changed to 2022 there. So let's look at these two films. So when you adjust these numbers for inflation, the first film cost around $190 million. The second film cost over $201 million. And so, you know, technically they'd spent less this time around, but it's really hard to say one way or the other. But look at these numbers. So again, first Friday, $31 million for the first film. That dropped to $25 million. Opening weekend, $78 versus $62 million. So if you look at the long-range forecasting for this film being $48 to $58 million, that makes sense. So historically speaking, that actually would work out. That math would pan out. If this film is not well received and early reviews are indicating that it's another one of these throwaway films that doesn't really matter, that no one really cares about, that really just doesn't tell much of a story at all. Also, of course, one other negative factor I forgot to mention was the Ezra Miller factor. Uh, you know, he's been a, a hot mess recently and he needs help. So, you know, God save him. God help him. Um, but that's another factor that could keep people from seeing the film. Also, apparently he is a very featured role in the film and has no screen presence. And that's really sad because earlier on in his career, he showed a lot of promise. And it looks like the Hollywood system has kind of eaten him up and chewed him out. And uh, it's just it's a sad situation overall. But again, these are numbers that should be concerning because if the top out of this film is expected to be where by the second or third weekend the second film was at, that's awful. That That's atrocious. And we can expect then similar drop-offs internationally as well. So look at the international box office of the first film, 612 versus 494. Again, a 200 or so million dollar drop in that capacity. Again, maybe a little over $100 million. You know, 200 million might be a little bit uh, you know, over-exaggerated, but I still think that those numbers are, are worth looking into nonetheless, because we do have the early numbers of the film. It's open in 22 markets. It's not doing very well, and these are numbers that we can expect to pretty much hold, and if these drops continue in this way, in this capacity, this film is expected. Again, $500 million is what it needs to be able to break even. The second film made 655. This film 
probably looking at a top best case scenario of $500 million, I would guess, especially with all the controversy surrounding it. Uh, let's just say it's not looking good for this film. What are y'all's thoughts? Do you think Fantastic Beasts 3 is going to be able to make its money back? Do you think it's going to be able to be a smash hit based on these projections? I don't think so. These are projections that are going to change. Again, they, they was trending upwards. So for all we know, maybe a recent marketing push. They have had really tried hard recently, and I mentioned this in another video. They had a recent trailer get released where they basically had three-fourths of the trailer be from the Harry Potter films. And they were trying to make the connection to the wizarding world and saying, you know, go on another adventure to see Dumbledore's first army. And they were really trying to push those feels or the member berries hard. That might be enough to convince some people who are on the fence to go. But I think that a lot of people have already convinced themselves one way or the other whether they are going to see this film or not. I probably will see this film just so that I can review it and let y'all know how bad or if it's surprisingly good, which I doubt. But hey... I can sometimes be surprised by these things. But what are y'all's thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, laugh that fire button on Odyssey. Y'all all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my April Patreon subscribe star and locals members, starting off with Patreon with animation commentator, Brandon, let's go Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, Hymir Ari Hymason, Inflamed Wood, Jacob from Holland, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Priscilla Hall, Rosella Allen, Stan Andrian, Miss Martin Muses, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B., the Empress of the Universe. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Patreon. And also to my subscribe star peeps, Matt317, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan4, John B., Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alice McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, J. Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man. And also a huge shout out to my locals members. Uh, starting off with Kara Tharp, K Tharp 56. Also, UAB Mad Dog, Mike Jackson, Robert Barnes, and also a huge support as well to Brett D90. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Locals. Thank you again to everyone for supporting the channel. Please, if you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream and video, go ahead and check out the top link at the video description. It is my Willow link, as I like to describe it, and it brings you to a link tree where you get access to all of these different locations, as well as all of the various social media platforms that you can follow me on. If you join at the uh, Citizen of Asgard level, you get your name shouted out at the end of every single live stream and video. Army of Asgard level gets you that, plus you get access to a giveaways channel that I have on Discord. If you ever don't have access to that giveaways channel, please contact me. I do send out the link to the Discord and, and with the instructions on it uh, at the beginning of every single month. But if you don't have access to that giveaways channel where I'm giving away 4Ks and Blu-rays and all that kind of stuff, as much as I possibly can give away is available there. Uh, please just reach out to me and I will gladly walk you through the process to make sure you get access to that giveaways channel. And again, that is, again, Army of Asgard level, whether you be on Patreon, Subscribe Star, or on Locals. Also, if you are the keeper of the Bifrost level, you get access to all of that. Plus, you get access to a podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger. We try and do it once or twice a month. I think we're going to try and do it twice this month to make up for uh, some miscommunication that we had last month. So be on the lookout for that and look out for those uh, podcast Q&A posts that are always available on the Patreon main page, the Subscribe Star main page, on the YouTube side of things as well. The YouTube community tab, you'll always find the podcast Q&A there and also on the Locals uh, page as well. And if you join at the Chosen of Valhalla level, the highest of the levels, you get access to all of that. Plus, if it's your first month, you get a free t-shirt, any t-shirt you want from my Teespring, my Public, whichever one you want to get it from. 
You just let me know the size, uh, location I'm sending it to, uh, color, that kind of stuff. You get it sent to you. Plus, you get to be featured once a month on the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we all come together and just talk about movies and really anything the Chosen wants to talk about. And it is a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you all very much for your love and for your support. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.